But in watercolor, this is going to dry considerably lighter. So what looks like a bold value here will turn out to be not bold value at all. Okay, so even at this stage, when I have now two washes on here, I do have a sense of the light on this side. And now we need to take it a step further. So I get a dark value. Now this is a very dark value, but I want it to be still to the red side. So that's a dark value of red. And also with this dark value, I mean, I, I have painted some trees and I have one of my favorites that I see down at the local park, but I'm just, I'm just trying to get the beginning sense of some detail, even though there won't be a lot of detail, but there's often, you know, bark and holes and whatnot. So I want to get a sense of that by um, painting, I'm leaving some spaces. And also I'm going to switch to my uh, number 12 round because I am getting into a little bit more of the detail area. So I'm just going to you know, have a few things sticking out here and there. Okay, and now I want to take this to a really dark value. So it's going to be it's almost a really dark, well, it's still a bit to the red side, but it's getting more to that blue side. But it should be a bit of a darker value. And I'm going to try, I'm just going to blot some of this up. I'm going to just start to create a little bit of detail. I'm going for the idea there's this big knot hole or, the, you know, I don't know what they're called, but where there was a branch or something. So. And again, these areas like it really helps if you've studied trees or you know a great idea. Take a look at a tree and just get some idea of the detail that's there. There's such a strong yellow there that it's almost playing with my dominant. So I think what I'll do, just clean it now because I do want this to be clean color. I'm going to take some some just cad red. Fairly wet and I want to just tone down some of this yellow so that it reads as a red tree. Let's see even just those strokes it's now a red tree. And I kind of try and have some some lively brushwork. So actually I can see the background is dry enough that this is not running. So do another one here. You can see where that's wet. Okay. So I come in again. I just need this to look like a tree at this point. I'll have that going right behind there. That's it's gonna make me I have to make it a little bit thicker because of that. Take a little bit of the yellow. little bit more of the red. Yeah. Okay. 
I think the value on these is probably okay. It's it's less than the value in here, so they don't compete. But I am just going to pop a little bit of value. And in a picture like this, where the tree is our main subject, it's in fact the bottom of the tree that's the most important. Up here, I want to tend to keep it less of everything and have more of the contrast, more of the color, and everything at the bottom. So I'm going to add some of this dark, but keep it at the bottom. And in fact, since I'm doing that, I'm going to make it a much stronger dark and come in to this tree. Now you see by adding this, all these darks down here, it's drawing your eye to the bottom and up here, which is actually fairly colorful and a strong value, it seems less now because this is pulling your eye down here. I'll just add a little bit of that in there. Actually, I'll just clean this. I want to start with some orange and red. I mean red and yellow. And I want to get a few, I want the idea of uh, clumps of grass down here. So I'm going to just draw some. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, to kind of blend this in a little bit more. I'm taking pure water and I'm going to run some pure water along here. And you can see it starts to, these shapes run and it kind of integrates things a bit more. I'm going to do the same over there. And now I'm going to come in, that's just sort of the beginning of that. I'll clean this up a touch. I want to come in with some phthalo blue for this foreground. And again, I'm using really fast strokes because these kind of, uh, it's called dry brush, where this sort of the paint, the brush skips over the surface of the paper. I want to use, have, uh, let some of those work for me. So I'm, I'm kind of doing, yeah. Now that, I actually like that. The only thing is I need to remember, this is a CAD red dominant picture. So that, that blue is very nice, but I need to get some red into it. And again, never hurts, a little bit of splatter. Oh yeah, like this, love it, priceless, priceless. I take some pure water. Maybe I'll just have just a hint of the yellow over here. But I mainly want to I want to have this corner be predominantly phthalo blue. Okay. And little spots where I've skipped, I'm going to leave those. Those become very handy. I'm going to go for a darker value. I'm going to take a little bit of everything. So I'll get a combination of hard edges. I'm fine with all of that. I'm just here. I've got this white patch in here in this one and I don't know that I want both of those. So I think this one's got to go. And because I've got lots of red there I think a little of my phthalo blue with the yellow. So it'll give us a hint of green. Yes. Another thing 
where this uh, um, where these I've had these runs, I want to just reinforce the tree in front of the run a little bit. And what that will do, it'll push the run further back. Add a little bit of yellow, bring some of that back. Emphasize a little bit on this tree. Take some pure water just to run some of these shapes together a little bit, make them a little more organic. Okay, uh, the other thing that really stood out to me is let's fix that is the background. There's too much contrast between this tree, the value of this tree, the detail of this tree, and the background. So I'm going to switch to my half inch flat. So they don't get shapes to be too large. I'll take a mixture here, starting more to the red, but picking up whatever's in my palette. The beauty of this triadic system, there's no, every color fits in. So I'll take this, and I'm going to just do some, some tree shapes here. So this is kind of adding a bit of detail in a sense. And it'll really start to bring that forward. So I'm going to take this brush and I'm going to start playing with the idea of foliage or you know whatever. Oops. Forest type debris. And I'm also trying to break up these All these straight lines. In fact, I will go to my my round brush. Again, I'm holding it on the side and just kind of scumbling around. Yeah, see when I've done that there, see I'll take this section. There's two, you know, you've got some very sharp straight edges can be quite distracting. So I'm going to take the side of the brush and just do some scumbling. And it's take away it's taken away that emphasis of those straight edges a bit. And up here. So I sometimes again the side of the brush it's a more random. I have less control which is often a very good thing. And then I can see what shape I've created and go in and play with a little bit of that. And again, the most important part is down at the bottom here. So I want this to be a red value, but a darker red value. And I'll come in here. What will I do? So again, I just want to integrate some of this stuff down here a bit more. Yeah. I'm going to take my half inch and a very light value, lots of water, and I'm just going to get some ideas happening in there. And I might even switch back, because these all basically look like deciduous trees and around here we have more of the coniferous so I'm going to try and create a sense of that. Now of course I don't want to overdo this. 
and I have a tendency to do just that. So I want to be try and be fairly conscious of Okay, the last thing I think I'll do just to get a little interest back here. Yes, that's created a little bit of interest. Now the one thing I, I, I just want to avoid leaving this background like a cookie cutter here with it. To, it's like I can see that all my detail in the background ended in here. So I need to bring a bit of that detail in there. I'm going to just add a bit of the blue, light value again. Because as I mentioned, I want to draw your eye down to the bottom. So I'm just going to tone down the sky a little, or the top a little bit. And a, uh, yeah, so I think that that's, I now feel that the background and foreground work more together. So I'm going to let this dry, take another look and maybe a few finishing touches or it might be done. I've just dried it, taken a look and I'm quite happy with it. It has, uh, what I like for me is that it has a, there's a sort of a rhythm and a, an action. and it's, uh, it's a fairly active painting which I like. There's, it's, there's stuff going on there, and I, I really like the color harmony. I think I've been successful in maintaining a CAD red light dominance, but integrating all the other colors. And I could I could easily stop here. Um, I just want to point out it's it's I find it neat that this run had gone into the tree, but now by painting over it, it pushes you know it just makes. It get, makes that area now makes more sense. So I just want a few uh, longer strokes. Staying, trying to stay mostly towards this area. I would now say that it's finished. I'm happy with that. Thank you very much for joining me and I uh, hope to see you next time. <laughs>